Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about solving matrices with the Gauss-Jordan method. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's talk a little bit about vocabulary. Here we have a system of three equations in three unknowns and an answer column. This is called a system, and we're going to turn it into a matrix by using the coefficients of the variables and the answer column. When you're using the coefficients of the variables, that's called a matrix, and when you add in the answer column, that's called an augmented matrix. Thus, we have four columns and three rows, so we call this a 3 by 4 matrix. Our goal is to change this around so that we get end up with this matrix right here. The ones going down the diagonals, zeros everywhere else, and then the answers, that is x equals whatever this number is, y equals whatever this number is, and z equals whatever this number is. I said c, I should have said z right there. This matrix, this 3 by 3 matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, is called the identity matrix. And Gauss-Jordan will let us get there. So the first thing I do is make an augmented matrix. Here it is. And I'm going to use these tables. Row 1 will consist of 8, negative 1, 3, and 25. Row 2 will consist of 2, 1, negative 1, 2. And row 3 will consist of negative 6, 1, 3, and negative 14. And my goal is going to be as I move in this direction to, uh, to get to the, the final matrix, is to put a 0 where the 2 is right now in row 2. All right, here's how I do it. I am going to use this recipe step. I'm going to add row 1 and negative 4 times row 2 and put the result in row 2 so that I'll have a new row 2. So row 1 is 8, negative 1, 3, 25. Oh. And row 2 is negative 4 times each of the numbers in row 2 so that I get negative 8, negative 4, 4, and negative 8. And when I add the two rows together, I get 0, negative 5, 7, and 17. And this is going to be my new row 2. That's right. I can actually substitute the result of adding two rows into a row. So here I go. Here is 0, negative 5, 7, and 17, the new row 2. I place it in row 2 right here, and now my goal is to change this position, the negative 6 in row 3, into a 0. I will do this by adding 3 times row 1 to 4 times row 3, and then substitute the result into row 3. So here I go. 3 times row 1 will give me 24, negative 3, 9, and 75. And 4 times row 3 will give me negative 24, 4, 12, and negative 56. And when I add these two together, I get 0, 1, 21, and 19. And this is going to be my new row 3 which I substitute in row 3. So now I have two zeros, one in the first position in row 2 and one in the first position in row 3. Now, looking at my goal, I have to put a 0 where 1 is in row 3. To do this, I am going to add row 2 
and 5 times row 3 and substitute the result in row 3 so that I have a 0 in this position. Here's row 2. Here's 5 times row 3. When I add them together, I get 0, 0, 112, 112. Now I realize that I can divide every position in the new row 3 by 112, and that will give me 0, 0, 1, 1. This now will become my new row 3, and I place it in row 3. Okay, this was going to be my new row 3, but then I discovered I could divide 0 by 112, 0 by 112, 112 by 112, and 112 by 112, and so get 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, my next goal is to put a 0 in this position in row 2, where the 7 is. So to do this, I will add row 2 and negative 7 times row 3 and put the result into row 2. So let's see. When I add row 2 to negative 7 times row 3, this is what I get. And when I add those two together, I'll get 0, negative 5, 0, and 10. And look at this. I can divide every number in row 2, in the new row 2, by negative 5 so that I'll get 0, 1, 0, negative 2, and this will be my new row 2, which I will put in row 2. And there it is, and now I have a 0 in this position. Notice that I'm almost where I want to be. All that's left for me to do is put a 0 in this position and this position, where the 3 is now and where the negative 1 is now in row 1. So let's do that. I'll add row 1 to negative 3 times row 3, and that will p permit me to put a 0 in this position, which I'm going to do now. This is going to be my new row 1. Now all I have left to do is put a 0 where the negative 1 is. So I'm going to add row 1 and row 2 and put the result in row 1. So this is what I have, 8, 0, 0, 2, 0. And now is a good time to divide through by 8 so that I can get a 1 in the first position. So I divide everything in row in this new row 1 by 8 so that I get a 1, 0, 0, 20 over 8, which reduces to 5 over 2. This will be my new row 1. And now, here I have my goal. I have the identity matrix here, and I have, the, I have numbers in the fourth column and what those are are what x equals, what y equals, and what z equals right here. I have now solved the matrix using Gauss-Jordan. I have the identity matrix, I have the answers to x, y, and z, and I am a happy camper. All right, now if you want to learn to do the official steps to solving with the Gauss-Jordan method, I recommend this website. It's an excellent website, except there are a lot of advertisements on the website. Nonetheless, I think you'll find this very complicated, but you'll be able to see the difference between my method, which waits until the end to put in all the ones, and the official Gauss-Jordan uh, method, which uses um, a lot of fractions from the very beginning, and I think it's unduly complicated. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.